The law is that thought will manifest in form, and only one who knows how to be the divine thinker of his own thoughts can ever take a master's place and speak with authority. Clearness and accuracy are obtained only by repeatedly having the image in mind. Each repeated action renders the image more clear and accurate than the preceding, and in proportion to the clearness and accuracy of the image will the outward manifestation be. You must build it firmly and securely in your mental world, the world within, before it can take form in the world without. And you can build nothing of value even in the mental world unless you have the proper material. When you have the material, you can build anything you wish, but make sure of your material. You cannot make broadcloth from shoddy. This material will be brought out by millions of silent mental workers and fashioned into the form of the image which you have in mind. Think of it. You have over five million of these mental workers ready and in active use. Brain cells, they're called. Besides this, there's another reserve force of at least an equal number ready to be called into action at the slightest need. Your power to think, then, is almost unlimited. And this means that your power to create the kind of material which is necessary to build for yourself any kind of environment which you desire is practically unlimited. In addition to these millions of mental workers, you have billions of mental workers in the body every one of which is endowed with sufficient intelligence to understand and act upon any message or suggestion given. These cells are all busy creating and recreating the body, but in addition to this they are endowed with psychic activity, whereby they can attract to themselves the substance necessary for perfect development. They do this by the same law and in the same manner that every form of life attracts to itself the necessary material for growth. The oak, the rose, the lily, all require certain material for their most perfect expression, and they secure it by silent demand, the law of attraction. The most certain way for you to secure what you require for your most complete development. Make the mental image. Make it clear, distinct, perfect. Hold it firmly. The ways and means will develop. Supply will follow the demand. You will be led to do the right thing at the right time and in the right way. Earnest desire will bring about confident expectation, and this in turn must be reinforced by firm demand. These three cannot fail to bring about attainment because the earnest desire is the feeling, the confident expectation is the thought and the firm demand is the will, and as we have seen, feeling gives vitality to thought, and the will holds it steadily until the law of growth brings it into manifestation. Isn't it wonderful that man has such tremendous power within himself, such transcendental faculties concerning which he had no conception? Isn't it strange that we have always been taught to look for strength and power without. We've been taught to look everywhere but within. And whenever this power manifested in our lives, we were told that it was something supernatural. There are many who have come to an understanding of this wonderful power and who make serious and conscientious efforts to realize health, power, and other conditions and seem to fail. They do not seem to be able to bring the law into operation. The difficulty in nearly every case is that they are dealing with externals. They want money, power, health, and abundance, but they fail to realize that these are effects and can only come about when the cause is found. Those who will give no attention to the world without will seek only to ascertain the truth, will look only for wisdom, will find that this wisdom will unfold and disclose the source of all power, 
that it will manifest in thought and purpose which will create the external conditions desired. This truth will find expression in noble purpose and courageous action. Create ideals only. Give no thought to external conditions. Make the world within beautiful and opulent, and the world without will express and manifest the condition which you have made within. You will come into a realization of your power to create ideals, and these ideals will be projected into the world of effect. For instance, a man is in debt. He will be continually thinking about the debt, concentrating on it, and as thoughts are causes, the result is that he not only fastens the debt closer to him, but actually creates more debt. He is putting the great law of attraction into operation with the usual and inevitable result. Loss leads to greater loss. What then is the correct principle? Concentrate on the things you want, not on the things you do not want. Think of abundance. Idealize the methods and plans for putting the law of abundance into operation. Visualize the condition which the law of abundance creates. This will result in manifestation. If the law operates perfectly to bring about poverty, lack, and every form of limitation for those who are continually entertaining thoughts of lack and fear, it will operate with the same certainty to bring about conditions of abundance and opulence for those who entertain thoughts of courage and power. This is a difficult problem for many. We are too anxious. We manifest anxiety, fear, distress. We want to do something. We want to help. We're like a child who has just planted a seed and every 15 minutes goes out and stirs up the earth to see if it's growing. Of course, under such circumstances, the seed will never germinate. And yet, this is exactly what many of us do in the mental world. We must plant the seed and leave it undisturbed. This does not mean that we are to sit down and do nothing. By no means. We will do more and better work than we have ever done before. New channels will constantly be provided. New doors will open. All that is necessary to have an open mind. Be ready to act when the time comes. Thought force is the most powerful means of obtaining knowledge and if concentrated on any subject, will solve the problem. Nothing is beyond the power of human comprehension, but in order to harness thought force and make it do your bidding, work is required. Now remember that thought is the fire that creates the steam that turns the wheel of fortune upon which your experiences depend. Ask yourself a few questions, and then reverently await the response. Do you not now and then feel the self within you? Do you assert this self, or do you follow the majority? Remember that majorities are always led. They never lead. It was the majority that fought tooth and nail against the steam engine, the power loom, and every other advance or improvement ever suggested. So for your exercise this week, visualize your friend. See him exactly as you last saw him. See the room, the furniture. Recall the conversation. Now see his face. See it distinctly. Now talk to him about some subject of mutual interest. See his expression change. Watch him smile. Can you do this? All right, you can. Then arouse his interest. Tell him a story of adventure. See his eyes light up with the spirit of fun or excitement. Can you do all of this? If so, your imagination is good. You are making excellent progress. <laughs>